Um, so, mate, you're a civil engineer. You're not a linguist. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. so how, did you, how, did you, how did you build the skills to actually launch a business like this? It just like, seriously, just like smash your head to a wall and just like get into it. And as I said in the beginning, I had some help with uh, a lot of friends that they already knew something about this industry and they were working into this industry and they encouraged me to do that project. So why not you do this? And we just like put a, a business plan, we found it suitable, and then with their recommendation every now and then, um, just go for it. So you have multiple shareholders with this No, business? no, no, it's, it's only mine. So it's literally getting advice from friends that yeah. were in the space, yeah. learning yeah. from them. Exactly. And it, it, they are happy to pitch in most of the time. They have their own businesses like themselves. Mm. So they are happy to give advice because we have been knowing each other since we were like four or five years old. Mm. So this is the thing, like even when I, when I was traveling for so long, I didn't lose the connections to all the people that I have um, in my life, let's say in any other country. Sure. You, you know, you know, what's a reoccurring message I hear with everyone that comes on the show? It's, it's how resourceful you have to be. You know, it's like that's that's a trait that all entrepreneurs have. It's the ability to get the job done by tapping the right shoulders and having the right conversations and asking the right questions. And that's the only way you learn, right? It's right. through being able to get in the room with someone that knows more than you and really be a sponge and consume as much as you can, learn, 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 and then go on the run. And that's how you ended up building this business by the sounds exactly. of things. Exactly. So exactly. you're going, okay, give me, give me an example of the sort of questions like, you're asking your friends. Um, like really you start from the basics, like, what is this business like if if you can understand what they're talking about in the beginning then you will know okay i can pull this off uh, after that you okay who's gonna do the job are we hiring some people or we are just like outsourcing everything um then you you go a, a step further okay how much investment should we put in what is the um uh, the revenue the roi that i'm going to get back from this um, is it easy to reach customer? Is, is, is it easy to sell what you have? This is kind of questions that you might ask to know if your investment or your ideas will like, is it going to be worth it or not? Mm. So as you were saying, like, I, I used to be a civil engineer, like all I knew was just like roads and concrete and this kind of stuff. But it just like talking to the right people, talking to all people, get like, listen to everyone like i would i would summarize everything under one word which is curiosity like just nice. that i was so curious okay how you do that and mm. if you know this person quite well that you trust this person they give you really good advice and then you build your network from there and then off you go so let's let's walk through the steps you took to create this business i presume website making a website was one of the first steps of course yeah did so, you do it yourself i did it myself not like building the whole website like coding and stuff like nowadays there is like heaps of tools that you can use mm. um i used wix which is one of the easy tools to use you can build it yourself using wix it's drag like, and drop right yeah there's mm. heaps of templates like mm. you choose based on your logo um you can put all the colors the color palette the the font that you need all the content that you're gonna put inside that website, like the pages and all of that contact details, etc. So th this is how it started. And then you put all the your business emails at one point because you want to look professional. Right. You don't want to lose like you don't want to at Gmail or oh, at Hotmail. No, yeah, sure. exactly. So, so you registered your domains, you created the website. Correct. Once you have the website, you have a business. Exactly. You know, that's literally a storefront. That's what a website Correct. is. Exactly. It's exactly. gone to the days where you have to like, you know, have an actual physical presence, a no. website with some ads, a bit no. of marketing, and exactly. you can actually reach customers. Like I, like nowadays, like I don't think that having a premises or having like a, renting a big place and put some people in, it's, it's nowadays it's not even after COVID, like after COVID changed everything. Mm. It changed everything. It's, it changed the way that people do business like mm. whatsoever. So, um, getting this, it actually is your expenses as well. So now it's easier for some people to get into business. 100%. The next step that just to try to formalize your paperwork. So it has to be an, a formal entity with the government, the taxation purposes, all this kind of stuff. So just like did some research online. Registering entities. Exactly. Yeah, ABN, ACN, all this kind sure. of stuff. Getting an accountant involved, of course, mm. um, just to take care of all your taxes because you don't want to divide your 
mind into a lot of stuff especially this kind of stuff like accounting and paperwork and all this mm. all this and then after that you start d putting the business plan together like putting all the numbers together to, sh to see what your expenses might be the revenue that you might get the net profits if it's worth it or not and then the next stage would be hiring some people to do the job or you're doing yourself if 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 you can do that mm. so you can save even more that you don't have to hire a lot of people in and you take all the revenue for yourself if this is the case based mm. on the business of course i think a so. big takeaway there sorry to cut you off bro no, but uh, the big takeaway there is you know finding the right people to do the jobs that you need to get done right. you know you leave right. the bread making for the bakers so you exactly. don't try and do everything because then you get overloaded yeah. Uh, and then you feel like you're chasing multiple rabbits. You don't yeah. catch any and, yeah. you know, you just pull your hair out, your beautiful hair out. Um, <laughs> so, so That's a good one. <laughs> you, find, you find the right people, put them in the right seats, and then you can focus on working on the business, not in the business. Correct. So, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How did you, How did you? once you've got the website, you've got the accounting done, you've got legals handled, how did you then say, okay, I need to start selling a product. Who do I sell this to? How did you develop the product? Yeah. So, like, if we are talking about Orbit specifically, like, you have um, to do some sales first, like, which is trying to reach out to customers. How you find the first customer is actually the hardest part of it. So, you do lead generation. You try to find, okay, I'm targeting this type of businesses. Either it's an MLV or a direct customer. What's like MLV? Yourself multiple language vendor okay yes. so it's a bigger company mm -hmm. like you like what you do exactly but way way bigger sure. these are the companies that they can reach to apple to microsoft to samsung because the bigger companies the big ways they don't have these translators on like in-house sure so they hire other companies to do it so that was that the plan in the beginning that i can reach out to like a big contractor and i can get like bits and pieces from them and they start doing the job. So an MLV is someone that will have contacts with big organizations that needs work to get done in translation and you want to plug into the that MLV, yeah. which essentially is is an affiliate, someone that's referring you work, exactly. correct? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they take a lot of jobs that they cannot handle themselves, like the whole thing. So they free their time only for QA quality assurances and they distribute all the work to subcontractors so to speak that's a perfect way to to acquire customers and I think I think it's something people should consider more often like I'll give you an example with with finance at least or mortgage brokers um, a lot of them team up with like car car shops or you know a place where they're selling cars or you know they'll go to honda they'll go to whatever it is and i say hey listen we can offer a finance option and now you start getting referrals you give kickbacks yeah. you give commission and now you've got someone referring you work that you're not even working on getting the customer's walking to them and then they're referring them to you so affiliates is a massive customer acquisition strategy it's actually something we don't do enough um with yeah. at fundo we, yeah. we we do direct marketing entirely um but it's so scalable because that way you're not trying, you're not fighting and clawing for an individual customer. You're, you're fighting and clawing for an MLV. Yeah. And that MLV is scaling. It is, is scalable, excuse me. Yeah. And they'll, they'll start, you know, providing you a whole bunch of customers. So is that what you did? You, you partnered up with an MLV, uh, who started giving you work. Exactly. That's okay. exactly right. And on the side, I'm doing my own homework as well. Like I'm trying to reach to my direct customers straight away, building, a database mm. i don't want to like to rely on on one specific mlv and then the work will be a little bit minimal and i can't like pay my employees at the end of the month for example like mm. you have to find your own way because at some point i want to be the mlv that right. i'm taking the work from and this is actually a plan that expansion is like it has to be done at some point but you have to take it step by step um like like a very aggressive expansion at one point it's really dangerous so you need to take it like bit by bit and try to like know where you're at at mm. the moment and how many steps do you need to take you don't have to jump you have to take it step by step yeah so you don't want to bite off more than you can chew and get too many mlvs to the point where for example you can't cope with the work then the exactly. quality drops and then exactly. they don't want to deal with you in the future when you're actually capable of doing that's it. exactly um, right the quality is the main thing that i want 
like Orbit to have this branding quality. Like mm. These people, they can handle the job right. They can deliver on time, which is really, really crucial. And we have to give them the job because we know that it's going to be 100% correct. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.